Some say this is the best breakfast burrito-based LinkedIn live show on the planet. Others say it's okay. Burritonians around the world, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, it's time to come together. It's Thursday. It's 7.45 a.m. This is the Big Live Breakfast Burrito! We made it. We did. We did. I was just, I was getting some um, little bits prepped for my um, for my movies later on. So I think I'm probably going to crack that open. Right. So it's mostly wine based, mostly it, alcohol based, right? Yeah. Yeah. And a nice little bottle of gin as well. But I have got some quality street just to balance it out. So, um, no, I've noticed, Eric, that you have raised the bar this week, my friend, and you're in a black tie and i just thought that was a little bit overdressed for cine world so what what's, what's going on there <laughs> it's a little so I'm, I'm channeling a lot of movies here right i thought i would channel a lot of movies so i've got a little tribute to goodfellas and reservoir dogs yeah very good. i've got a i've got a little bit of a tribute to quadrophenia with a target pin nice. uh, i've got a bit of brave heart going on over here i've got james bond's watch Wow. Um, I'm going commando for Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and I thought I thought the overall theme could mm-hmm. be, oh, Jason Statham's less, let himself go a bit, isn't he? <laughs> you do look a bit like him. You look very, 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 very sharp this morning. You look a bit like his grandpa, maybe. <laughs> My goodness me. My goodness me. So, <laughs> so, uh, so we should say hello to some of these lovely people that have taken their time out of their morning to come and join us. Michal, straight in number one. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's so nice to see you. Derek Roy is here. Joe Morris is here. Uh, LinkedIn user from Sydney. I mean, we can't. Uh, from a, it sounds like John Holt. Druk it because the Scottish Sydney thing yeah. going on here. I ha- think it is. Samantha, good to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. Samantha, you knew. I've been meaning to attend for ages. Recommended by several. Isn't that lovely? That's Samantha, great. that is gorgeous. Welcome, welcome. I hope we uh, make it worthwhile staying with you. Andrew Tanner Smith is here. Beth Alexander's here. Uh, who else is here? Jim Wolfe is here. Matthew Sexton, Andy Griffiths. Everybody gets a shout out. Stephen Cox, Jenny Fife. I'm just doing randoms now. Just, just randoms. Just randoms. Ross Jolly is here. Jessica Smith, our winner from last week. Yeah. She's come back. It was her first show last week. She's come back. It must have been good. Wow. Look at this. Everybody gets a shout out. Jamie Burns, my first time making the burrito. Very good, Jamie. Hello and welcome. Outstanding. Good <laughs> morning, that. Burrito Lances. John Bloomfield, popcorn for breakfast. Absolutely. Uh, Henry Foxworthy, the brilliant Jim Reed. Jim Reed, you should be busy. The, those cars need to keep moving, man. There's, yeah, don't be sitting here wasting your time with this. Um, John Marshall's here. Uh, J- Jamie's here. We said Richard, Lisa, and Samantha. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. Our job's to make it worth, worth, worth the price of admission, right? Fingers crossed. And that is exactly the price of the, of admission. This is your big live, live breakfast burrito with me, Eric Doyle, and... Me, Vanessa Gartel. And uh, this is our Let's Go to the Movies show. Which is just an absolute storming idea. Isn't Absolutely. It, it's it's fabulous. I love I love the music that's come in. It's just great. We're going to have a, a fantastic social. Welcome to uh, uh, Burritonians, hardcore Burritonians that have been with us for a while. And welcome to all the new people. Um, we're, we're going to have a nice time. We're going to have a nice hour. We, you can maybe win some prizes. We're going to hear some good music and do some malarkey, as it's been called. Malarkey. Structure. Malarkey. Malarkey. Um, the only price of admission is that every single person, Kevin's driving to the HQ, Love movies, love popcorn, fantastic. Thanks for joining us. Uh, careful in the roads. Um, uh, the only price of admission is that you say hello, tell us where you are, and tell us what's for breakfast. Yeah, what is for breakfast? I'm really hungry. Have you had your breakfast yet? I had a, a double espresso. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. double, which is probably the, the last thing I need. And I'm on, I'm on a big cup, number two. Oh, yeah. Very good. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit electric. So, uh, what's what's on this week? This week is all about the movies. 
So on the music, it's all about songs from films, songs about films, and it's just fantastic. Do you want me to give you a little uh, a little example of what the Boritonians have asked for? Let's right, we're going to start with this. Do you know what they call a Big Mac in Amsterdam? I believe it is a Royale with cheese. It is. <laughs> That's just put me in the mood. That's just put me right in the mood. But I think I think what we really need to do is get into the kitchen. You ready? Oh. He was giving all the waiters 20s. Don's and Poma D. Uh, and it'll be a protein granola for Brecky. Very healthy, I like that. Uh, Jamie Burns, I'm in Irvin Ayrshire, and, uh, and uh, I thought it was Ayrshire and a smoothie for breakfast. <laughs> uh, a smoothie for breakfast, nice one. Uh, what is uh, Haley saying? Yogurt for breakfast and waiting for grandsons to arrive. Oh, oh, Lovely. Nice. Best on the pancakes. This made me laugh listening to this song. Right, listen, right at the very start. Is that, listen for a little. Listen for that, right? It's like a few bars in. Listen to this. Right, listen to that. Imagine imagine Dave and the crystals, right? So Dave, we want you to do the salt thing for the entire song. And Dave's like, I'm just happy to be here. I want to do it. So this is Dave. Ah, oh, suck this shit. That's quite a good upper body workout. See, that was three and a half minutes. You'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> that was Dave from the Crystals doing the salt shaker. Well no done, Dave. Those days. Someone actually did that for three minutes. Ridiculous, ridiculous. What about a bit of this to bring us a bit more up to date? That was me in the orchestra in high school. Right, so that is an idea of the type of the quality of music that's coming to this show today is spectacular. That is actually high quality as well. It's high quality, absolutely. Um, we've got prizes coming your way. In a minute, we'll be giving away drinks tokens to the OGV Taproom. You, anyone can win those. We'll be giving away tickets to the OGV Podium to go and see a gig of your choice and some fantastic gigs coming up. They've got Idol Wild coming soon, which is pretty cool. Uh, and our main sponsors today are the brilliant Andrew Connolly and the fantastic team at Imenco. They have put up a 150 pound Amazon voucher, which could be yours. So stay with us to the end-ish of the show. Um, see what we do, we put the best part at the end. <laughs> so people the stay on. Part, <laughs> There's a lot of drivel until the end part, until the end part. What, uh, what else is coming up in the show today, Vanessa? Uh, well, we've got a uh, poetry corner with the um, lovely um, Will Shorten. Doyle's doubles. Maybe you'll actually have one this week, Eric, because I think that skipped it. Yeah, last I've got week. one. I've got it. was dreadful last week. I do apologise. Okay. They're all dreadful. Oh, right. yeah. um, we've got um, what's the point? So what's an, uh, annoying you around the world today? We've got yep. mug shots, all the brilliant content from our group page. We've got around to it with a lovely Susan, a matter mm -hmm. of fact with Simon. I'm going to do a little bit of wine stuff. And then we've got synonyms uh, where we get you guessing Eric's um, cryptic song lyrics. And maybe all of this will happen. And maybe if some of it might, and maybe none of it will. But that's maybe just none, of, maybe none of it will. But one, mix. one thing's for sure, we're going to turn some people's cameras on. Are we? Because we've got yes, we're going to start. We're going to start with breakfast cam. Let's I think we it. should. I think we should just do it. I think we should just definitely do it. So this is the point of the show where we can turn people's cameras on because we love Restream, they love us, and they give us some malware, and we can turn your cameras on. Brackets? No, we can't. That's a lot of rubbish. That's a lot of rubbish. <laughs> it's like all planned. Game. It's all scripted and rehearsed. All right, just just in case anyone gets upset. So this is breakfast cam. Vanessa, tell me when you want it to stop, but let the song go on a bit just to annoy Andy Griffiths. Okay. 
Okay. Three, two, yep. one, stop. Oh, Wendy Harris. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy Harris, good morning. How are you? You're not allowed to talk with your mouth full. No, speak no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we morning, caught, what, everybody. What's in the bowl? Homemade muesli. Homemade muesli. We expected nothing less. Very nice, Wendy. Very nice. Keep we know you're one of the busiest people on the planet. Uh, have a lovely day. Thank you for joining us. And sorry for interrupting your morning. Enjoy your breakfast, can I have some Wendy. Now, sir? Yes, you can. You can. Thank Absolutely. You Thank you, Wendy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Oh, it's Stephen Sumner. Stephen. I don't think he knows we're here. He's a little bit, he's a little bit. He's in Spain, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I thought he'd be on the beach. I think this might be one of these ones where people don't know they've been turned on. There's Stephen, he's shown us around the kitchen. He's shown, maybe he's not, maybe, but maybe. Shall we just, uh, he's got oat, oh, pears, yogurt. Right, we'll just leave him. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Thank we will you. see you shortly. Ta-ta. Enjoy your breakfast. Tell me when to stop. Stop. <laughs> morning, Sarah. Oh, morning. Oh my God, you got me my roller and no makeup on. You usually look so fantastic with all your fashion ideas and we've caught you with your... Ina Sharples. Ina Sharples. You see, when I take it out, <laughs> it makes, it makes the, the fringe all um, big. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that later. Yeah, but I've got for breakfast, I've got mango, banana... Strawberries, Greek yogurt, one the dual date, and walnuts. And I love it. Every morning. It sounds so, delicious. I love the I love the the measure of one, just one date, just yeah, one. They're very good for you. They're syrup foods, so they're good for weight loss. Even though they, but they have to be medjool dates. Have to be really medjool nice. dates. Have to I be medjooly dates. You look Looking fantastic. fantastic. We will catch up with you later on. Thank you for joining Bye, us. Bye, lovely Sarah. <laughs> That was breakfast cam. That's actually a feature on this show. Can you believe we get away with this? No, I can't. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you some more of the amazing tunes that we have today. And there are there are some absolute stonkers. Are you ready, right? Just yeah. come on. Come on. I'm tempted to put a banana in your tailpipe. You put a banana in the tailpipe? Do you like a lemon twist? Thank yeah, come back, Jimmy. Come back. Come back. Deal with all that client stuff later. This is where the fun's at. Oofed. Oofed. <laughs> Um, should we give some people's profits away? I think we should, yeah. In a cost of living crisis, I absolutely think we should. Yeah, It's amazing uh, that we get away with it in this show, that we just give away other people's profits. But um, one of our sponsors, our first sponsor of the, the, the show today is the amazing OGV Tap Room. Um, it's uh, a bar in Aberdeen. It's more than a bar in Aberdeen. It's a cool place, a meeting place, blah, blah, blah. It's all sorts of stuff. They make their own beers. They've got lovely cocktails there, lovely coffee. You can, and you can win a drinks voucher to go in and get four wow. of their lovely drinks. Wow. Excuse me, I had a bit of Windy Pops there. That's all right, love. It's excitement. You, you, you just, it's just two expressos. <laughs> <laughs> so what we need is type in OGV Tap Room, capital O, capital G, capital V, just like below, Windy, windy Pops. Um, and we need the song and the artist. And what what number of winner will we uh, take and the, we're going to wipe the slate clean right here but i have to say to anyone that's new to the show you need to get in quick because some of the old timers here are pretty fast on the mark right pretty fast on the mark um 
So, OGV Taproom, we need the song and we need the artist. And this is a little bit of a tribute because it was a sad loss recently, wasn't it? I think we're going to go for third. We're going to go for the third right answer to win yourself some tickets to OGV Taproom and get yourself some drinks. Of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left. Cause I've been blasting and laughing so long that even my mama thinks that my mind is gone. But I ain't never crossed a man that didn't deserve it. Sarah Doyle, Sarah Doyle knows every word. You know, this every is a word. cover, don't you? Is it? Oh, well, I've just, hold on, hold on, let's go back to that in a second. Bah, 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 bah. So we needed OGV tap room. We needed Gangsters Paradise by Coolio. So let's yeah. just see. Wayne, Wayne didn't Wayne gave us the song, but he didn't give us all the bits and bobs, right? Oh, so good try. Yeah. The first correct answer is David. The second one is Joe. And the third one is Lisa Farrell. Wow. She got a new job this week and gets and herself some drinks life. at the OGV tap room. Winning at life. Well done. Winning, <laughs> winning at life. I like winning. that. Winning <laughs> at life. Lisa, congratulations. We will be sending you through the mail uh, a lovely token to go and get yourself some drinks at the tap room. And thanks for the tap room for sponsoring this part of the show. Outstanding. So just as my little fact there, that was originally, if you've not ever heard the original, it's called Pastime Paradise by Stevie Wonder. What? And it's amazing. It, it, both are absolutely fabulous. But it was Mr. Uh, Stevie. He did the... Um, really? Simon Wells has just gone, oh, God, and just chucked a bunch of paper over his shoulder. Just really angrily. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> the air is blue in that little sound booth. Uh, absolutely blue. Um, uh, yeah, um, so we're going to go to our next feature. Um, sometimes we like to bring the, the tone up a little bit. Get a little bit, get a little bit classy. Yeah, a little bit of culture, a little bit of professionalism, a little bit of value. Because we yeah. don't actually bring that, so we have to bring someone else on who can. Exactly, because the first the first part of the show has been trash. Let's face it, right? Just utter trash. We love a bit of verse, maybe an ode, uh, maybe a rune, a limerick, uh, a sonnet, perhaps. Definitely a rhyming couplet. So to raise the tone a little bit, I'm going to go with this. Hoo-ha! <laughs> and we're going to bring on. <laughs> Get the car, Charlie. Get the car. I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> We're going to bring on the Bard of Baratonia. It's Mr. William Shorten, and he's actually here. William, good morning. Good morning. And that's not your Doyle's double for today, is it? No, it's not. Unfortunately, you've got something much better up your sleeve. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. When you've known him, when you've known him for as long as I have, Charlie, his name's John. Uh, <laughs> um, for those that don't know, and that are, yeah, scent of a woman, Stuart, it is yeah. so good, isn't it? So good, so good. Um, Come on, Will. Lots of love coming in for you already, the Bard. Yeah, no, very, very kind. And, uh, you know, thanks to everybody for the messages while, while I was away as well. Um, so you talked about the, the, the front of the show's been rubbish. No, it's been really uplifting. This, this is a little bit of a sombre poem today, but it's on theme in terms of Picture Show uh, is the name of it. Ooh. And it was written by Siegfried, Siegfried Sassoon, who's, who's known a lot for his kind of war poetry. Vid, Vidal's brother. Vidal's brother, yeah, yeah. He he had the haircut like you rather than Vidal, yeah. <laughs> so here we, here we go. And still they come and go, and this is all I know, that from the gloom I watch an endless picture show where wild or listless faces flicker on their way with glad or grievous hearts I'll never understand because time spins so fast and they've no time to stay beyond the moment's gesture of a lifted hand. Still the shadow and the blinding flame, the despair of men flings onward ever the same, as in the, those days that wait them and have been. And you, you just tailed off at the end there a little bit. We had a little bit of interweb uh, flickering, but we got it. We got it, and it was brilliant, Will. What we got was outstanding, lovely. It was lovely, and I don't know if you're still with us or if you're frozen. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm, I'm going to go that. with the fact that he's just—he's just, he's just looking at us intense. He stopped dramatically. A mic drop. Uh, excellent, excellent, good stuff. Thank you, Will, and it's good to have you back, sir. It's good to have oh. you back with us in person rather than a video. We will catch up with you later on, sir. 
Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Take care. All the best. Bye. Hata. That was your bound of Baratonia. We lost you the know, end of that one. I've just had a little thought, Eric. You've missed, you've missed the trick, right? right? If you had black shades on and black gloves and a little black ponytail, you could be Carl Lagerfeld. <laughs> It's just dawned on me. I was like... High collar. Um, yes. Yeah, Carl, Carl Lagerfeld. Thanks very much. That's not a look. That's not a facial look I was kind of going for in life, but I'll take it. 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 So that was Poetry Corner with the Bard of Boratonia, Mr. Will Shorten. Uh, some more music, right? Some more music, yeah. man. It's just the choice is incredible. How about this? People are strange when we're strange. Faces look ugly when you're alone. Women seem wicked when you're unwanted. The streets are running when you're down. When, when you're, you're strange. strange, faces come out of the rain. When you're strange, no one remembers your name. When you're strange, when you're strange. I don't know this one particularly, but I've heard you mention it before, but it was requested quite a lot by DM. What's this from? No, like an animation thing. Is that a kid's one? Right, okay. Does anyone know what this is from? Because it was requested a lot and I should have looked it up, but I haven't. It's a new one. It's a new one, yeah. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Simon. Encanto. Oh, oh Tima loves it. Ah, I see. On the subject of uh, Madame Begaman, uh, every week, every week, our, 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 our friendly Dane, who's a fan of the show, gives us a Danish song to play. And uh, let me just see if I can. So she always gives us this really deep, meaningful, amazing Danish music by Danish stars on the subject of the theme. Uh, this week, she suggested a band that are celebrating their 25th anniversary. And she suggested that we do Cartoon Heroes by Aqua. <laughs> The Pride of Denmark. Right now, I think she's laughing uncontrollably. Uncontrollably. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> it's the first time we've had Aqua on the show. Hopefully the last. <laughs> oh, I'm on Marble. <laughs> right, but yeah, look. Beth loving it. Right. Okay. We're on to um, what's the point? This is the point of the show where we uh, where we have a little chat, and you can pile in as well. There's no judgment here. It can be one word. It can be a little sentence. What is the point? And do you know? Do you remember where this came from? Someone someone had a little go at us in the chat in an early show and said, "What's the point of this rubbish?" So we turned it into a feature. What's the point? So um, we we anything that's grinding your gears, anything that's annoying you in your life or the world. Um, you can come on and just tell us what it is and you can tell us in the chat. So, for example, Vanessa, what is the point of? Daddy long legs. You don't get a daddy long legs? I don't like them. They just, mm -hmm. ugh, I don't, why? What is the point of them? I don't know what they actually do. <laughs> okay, what, that's it. You don't have to justify anything here. What is the point, John says, of uh, a 45p tax rate? I had a feeling that this was going to be a theme on what's the point this week. Yeah. Um, what's the point of business cards? Uh, business cards with a smiley face that comes after it, says Beth. Um, I'm going to go with, oh, let's, what's Ian saying? Let's, yeah, uh, what is the point of protesting at a conservative conference without a backup flag? Right. Okay. Uh, what is the, what is the point of popped what is the point of I popped popcorn? Right, okay, exactly. What is the point of a mini budget? Stephen well, Sumner says wasps. Yeah, and no, I agree with that. 
my wife would agree with that too. Uh, what is the point, the point of a printing firm with no ink? Uh, <laughs> this, this sounds really personal from David Taylor. What is the point of Sky installation engineers that aren't allowed to drill through your wall to install Sky? <laughs> Are they just supposed to like magic it through with their brain? Sellotape and some blue I'm tape. Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. We're not allowed to drill. Not allowed to drill. Um, what is the point of the word competence? <laughs> Um, what is the point of, says uh, says Stuart White, having a filling station and closing it to top up food in rush hour? Ne fuel. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, get that. Um, uh, what is the point of dunking a rich tea in a cuppa? Yeah, exactly. That's not going to last. That's not going to last. Uh, I would go with, uh, go on, ask me. Ask me, Vanessa. Eric, uh, what's the point of? Drake. Drake? Drake. Okay. Drake. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. I'm, that, I'm, I'm just ending it there. What is the point of Drake? Actually, his music makes me angry. Does it? See, I can't... Na, 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 na. Sells a billion, another five billion. Na, 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 na. Dreadful. Okay. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. Simon Wells, what is the point of? What's the point of eating a little maraschino chili in your, co in your cocktail and then realising it was actually a piece of chilli? Oh, oh, yeah. shocking. I feel for him. I feel for him. I feel for him. Um, what is the point of the spell? <laughs> what is the point of the spelling of dyslexia? That's ridiculous. Um, what is the point of people who install install toilet rolls backwards? Yeah. I'm with you on that, Angie. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, Subro, what is the point of? Being in the airport checkout queue and pushing right up to the person in front. That that plane's not going anywhere till everyone's on board. Just chill. Just chill. Good enough. Good enough. Um, what is the point of... Uh, let me have a little look. Uh, what was the point of... Uh, we'll, we'll end it on here. But what is the point of democracy? Yeah. yeah. What is the point of democracy? I just need to make a little note to myself, actually. Right. Um, cancel Eric's Drake calendar for Christmas. So I think yes. I'm just because I've been organised and I've started doing little presents and stuff, but I'll have to cancel that order yeah, for please. you. Please, please do, please do, please do. Absolutely. Um, we're moving on to a point of the show that we love, we love, we love, we love, we love. We like facts on this show. We like it's facts. It, it's a counterpoint to the nonsense, and we don't know any better person than uh, Simon Wells. It's a matter of fact. Good morning, Hello. sir. Hello. Hello. How is everyone? Super Jolly good. Fun. Pretty good. Yeah, thank you. Pretty good. Good. Good, uh, good week. What? what uh, good week. Yeah, it's been all right. I've been, um, oh, it's been a varied week work-wise. I've been voicing a little um, children's audio book with lots of, lots of silly little voices in it. Um, <laughs> and then did a really mundane piece that was all sort of matter of fact. And no, no, no. Yeah, and then, of course, there was the cherry chili incident. And the cherry chili, honestly, crikey. In a dimly lit room, a chunk of red chili on the top of your ginger spiced cocktail looks just like a cherry. Oof. It wasn't. Oof. That sounds like a, was that a, was that a Millie? I don't know. Someone bought it for me. I couldn't tell you what it was called. Anyway, anyway. Not having your, it again. <laughs> your function on this show is to beguile us with um, factuality, rea reality, actuality. Uh, you are the master of facts. Um, what what facts do you have us today? And have you based it around a the movie theme? I have based it around a the movie theme. There was, um, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll play a jingle while I'm here, shall I? Yes, please do. Fact of the day. There you there. go. All is right with the world. Um, right. Yeah, crikey. One of my favourite themes, I, movies. I just love movies. I love trivia. I love movie trivia. I love all the soundtracks that you've been playing. It's been fantastic. And I was rummaging around and I just couldn't. I, it was it was tough. I could have talked about the fact that in the final scene of Reservoir Dogs, one of the actors' blood squib fails to go off and therefore there are actually too many gunshots and not enough deaths. I could have talked about the fact that in When Harry Met Sally, in the cafe scene, the woman who says, I'll have what she's having, is actually the mother of the director. And the director was really embarrassed that she was experiencing that yep. scene. No way. But I thought I wouldn't talk about that because it's too short, too easy. Um, <laughs> so I just throw them in. So what I've got, movie trailers. Okay, so you know when you go to a movie for a good 45 minutes before the film actually starts, 
you've got trailers for upcoming yes. movies, series, things like that. They're called trailers because they used to trail the movie. They used to come at the end and not the beginning, which is what? why they're called trailers. Um, the first ever trailer was in an American cinema in 1913, and it was advertising a new musical movie called The Pleasure Seekers, which I don't know, but that was like the first time there was ever a trailer for another movie during a movie. Uh, the next one after that was in early 1914. It was advertising the new Charlie Chaplin film, and this just caught on. So cinemas started doing this, loads and loads of trailers at the end of the movie, um, advertising what else was coming up. By the 1930s, cinema owners realized that no one was sticking around for the trailers anymore. Yes. So they watched the film and then they naffed off. So the trailers were becoming a little bit redundant. So they started putting them at the beginning of the movie so that they had a captive audience and no one could could leave. Um, you know what, do you know that, what my, my wife calls them, which cracks me up every time? Go on. She calls them coming attractions. <laughs> That's funny. It was in the it was in the coming attractions. We should go and see that. I'm sorry, the what? <laughs> what, darling? The coming I, attractions. I, I suppose it makes more sense than trailers now that we know <laughs> what we know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that was it. Really, just quite quite brief, quite simple. Um, trailers, trailers, trailers. Perfect. Short to the point. Factuality. I'll tell you what. I'll I'll add a little because it was quite short. Um, bit of a Tarantino fan. Sorry. Um, I mentioned this one on the chat. Little green bag used in, in the, the the slow motion opening bit of reservoir dogs yes original the, the lyrics are actually not little green bag it's little greenback what? greenback being an american slang term for money so they're looking for a little greenback they're looking for some money someone in the production team got the wrong end of the stick and published it as little green bag oh this and is ridiculous they decided it would take too much effort to change it so they called it little green bag even though the lyrics say little greenback Fairly. Talking about talking about Tarantino, well, you're here. We're going to start this. This is one of the most beautiful pieces of music I've ever heard, and I'm going Go to put on. it forward a little bit, and it just it melts me. Nice. I get a shiver. Oh, right, that is class. That is class. I've actually realised, I was like, I'm such a Tarantino fan like yourself that I've actually got too much Tarantino in there. <laughs> nice. I went I went through a good chunk of the 90s just listening to Tarantino soundtracks. Yeah. So much in there. Ah, oh, there you go. Little green back. Yeah. Looking back down the track. Beautiful. So we'll just, we'll just sit here and listen to this. Yeah. Listen to listen to it carefully. It's a little green back. Yeah. Looking back on a track or a little green Because it rhymes with back and track. So it's a little green back, a little bit of green money. back, like a, a green a green dollar there dollar bill. Oh green man, back. you're good. You're good. Let's yeah. uh, let's give him a let's give him a massive round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank and you. And we'll see you later, sir. See you later. Ta-ta. Cheerio. Thank, Thank you very much. That's Oscar-winning facts. Oscar-winning facts. I just love the chorus here. I don't think I've got the right version. That's a rubbish version. Um, no. there's, a better, there's a better version than that, without a doubt. Um, we're moving into singing hymns. Singing hymns is where we put you guys to the test, and uh, just just rattle in your answers if you get these, and and go for it. I, I, some of them I've been accused of making these too hard, haven't I? Too hard? No, because they normally are too hard, and I haven't even seen them this week. So, right. So I've taken the lyrics from famous songs, all related to films this this uh, this week, and I've changed them for similar lyrics. Some of them quite ridiculous, but they pretty much mean the same thing, right? So the first one, it's really easy, right? Precious stones made of a clear and colourless crystalline form of pure carbon don't die. I only require them to keep me happy. I find them invigorating and tormenting, never departing in the evening. I'm confident they will stay here with I. What is that that I've changed the lyrics to? It's really easy. Do you get it? I think I've got it, yeah. Really? 
Yeah, I do. I'm not allowed to say, obviously, but... Um, no, you're not going to say. You're not going to say. Precious love. stones made of a clear and colourless crystalline form of pure carbon don't die. Yeah. Come on. Come on, people. Yeah. I only require them to keep me happy. I find them invigorating and tormenting. I'll show the lyric. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You guys got it. Yeah. They can stimulate to tease me. They won't leave in the I was just listening to this this week. She is incredible, isn't she? This is a belt of a song. Diamonds are forever. Hold one up. I used to love Joe Longthorne's impression of her. I thought he was brilliant. Do you remember the impressionist? He was very good. He was very good. Right, so that was your first one. That was your first one. Lies down for a full house. Here we go. Second one. It's coming up now. When your existence is not great, owl sound, owl sound. It could be possible you may have not remembered a piece, owl sound, owl sound. Indeed, to giggle, grin, gyrate, also serenade. If you find yourself with the sensation of depression, do not be witless, witless suckers. Simply press your kissing implements together and make a little sound by blowing. This is it. Oh, I've got a scooby on that. Oh, you have. I haven't. Think of the last line. What, ha what do you do when you press, what is it, what are your kissing implements? Okay. And what happens when you make a little sound by blowing? Anyone? Someone's going to get this. Yeah, it's not going to be me, but... Maybe then... not, maybe not. There's silence in the chat. There's silence in the chat. Yeah. Anyone? I think that's... It's nothing. It's an echo, echo, echo. No, no, not whistle while you work. I didn't get the down bit. Ah, yes, Alexander. Alexander, you absolutely got it. If life seems jolly rotten, there's something you forgot. And that's to laugh and smile and dance and sing. I got that perfectly timed, look. Oh, right, we're into the we're into the last ones. Let's see if you can get this. Let's see if you can get this. Um, thou has an acquaintance inside my body. Thou has an acquaintance inside my body. If the path in front is covered in rocks then you'll find that you are multiple sets of 0.62 kilometre equivalents away from the place where you sleep, which is just less than hot and appealing. Then you recollected the statement from your not young friend. Aha! Eric, I knew that you would, um, you would use the word thou in, in some way or another. Yeah, time. absolutely. Oh, Andrew's straight in with it. Andrew is straight in with it. He's got it already. Yeah, you. Oh, Randy Newman, you've got a friend of me from Toy Story. You got a friend in me. Very good. You like that? Yeah, and I love Toy Story. Even um, I'm the age where I probably shouldn't, but Toy Story. No, not at all. You're never, you're never, you're never too old for a bit of that. You're never too old. Uh, so Jay Smith, zero out of three. Uh, Beth, delighted, the first one she's ever got right. Um, oh. Yeah, you've got a friend of me. Absolutely got it. Whoever got this, like Sally Rowland here. Sally, are you new? Sally, Sally, I think it's. Yeah, I think well, she Welcome is. to you. Um, I'm going to contact you, get your address, and I'm going to send you one of these through the post because you yeah. got it spot on. I mean, just... It might take me a couple of years to do it, but I will do it. <laughs> I promise. I promise, I promise, I promise. So that was, uh, that was Singing Hymns. Singing Hymns. Well, I've got a special, special track for the next... Uh, I nearly said the next act. Um, Saturday night at 8 o'clock I know where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna all things language, all things words. It's around to it with Subro. She's been on more LinkedIn lives and audios and all that than anyone else on the planet this week. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm gonna give you all two weeks off to forget my face. Not at all. How can we, how can we forget that face with the little chip tooth? It's brilliant. Anybody interested? I have an appointment. <laughs> You're getting it fixed. I'm so excited, yeah, I came across a very, a very nice receptionist of a certain age who understands what us ladies get like about our appearance. Anyway. Especially when you're going on your holidays. I know. Absolutely. What have you What have you got for us today on the words relation vibe? Well, films, first of all, I didn't know whether to come as Outlander or The Last Samurai, so I just mixed it up a bit. <laughs> mixed it up well, a bit, and you could tell that was the two things. When you came on, I was like, Outlander, Last Samurai. Got it. 
Jules even is technical a dream coach. Exactly, exactly. What have, what have you got for us today? You need to. You, know, you need to. I need to put up the caption that says, uh, uh, "Come on, Susan, get around to come it." Come on, Sue, bro, get around to it. Um, <laughs> do you know? I was thinking. I, I, I kind of went down the road of transcreation with the errors, so I thought I'll just stick to the the very big question where films are concerned. And I'm afraid I call them films because American English is movies. Ah. We have British English, which is films. 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 What do you people out there think? VO or subtitles? So would you rather see the original... Would you rather see dubbing or subtitles? Sorry, I, can't, I watch a lot of Scandi dramas and I can't bear the voiceovers. I have to do subtitles. Sometimes. Some of them are awful. When I first moved to Switzerland, I was walking past a TV. It's the first time I experienced this. And there's Michael J. Fox talking I'm on screen. And there's like a 60-year-old man talking in French. <laughs> like, what? what What's going on here? Yeah, I'm all about the subtitles. Me too. Agree. <laughs> A couple of a couple of things, really. It's a couple of film recommendations that you might not have seen. There are some really cracking um, films out there. One you might not have seen is Bon Bon El Perro. Bon Bon El Perro. It's an Argentinian film about a plumber who is no money and somebody gives him a massive dog in return for services, and it's. <laughs> I, if, you're, if you're making this up, then I love you. Yeah. If you're oh, making this up, I'm a, a plumber that's got no money and someone gives him a massive dog. It sounds like the best film plot I've ever heard. It's a beautiful film and it's not very well heard of. And then you have to find the directors and, and have a look around then because we all know Parasite. It's, an, it's one of my favourite. It's one of my favourite films. I mean, you must have seen Parasite. But go down the South American route and have a look Bombay El Perro, I'll put a link in. If you if you do speak French, I don't think you'll find this subtitled, but Le Père Noël est une ordure, which is literally um, Father Christmas is rubbish or is a not a person. And it's got everything. It's a group that were at the theatre called the Splendid. And, you know, they're a bit like similar Monty Python thing. You know, they started as a troupe and then they did films. So if you can find Le Père Noël et Nordure and you like French, honestly, that film has everything. It might be a bit dated now. Can you However, put it in the chat, These yeah, all these yeah, films? I mean, Par chat. Parasite, most people will know. It's quite a... Yeah. It, Parasite's the Korean film, right? With a family that are living in the house. South Korean, yeah. It's so South dark, Korean. isn't it's it? It's very it's dark. hilarious at the same time. Yeah, dark and hilarious. The, the, I'll tell you what, Korean TV and movies are just up there these days. Do you know the money that Netflix is putting into just South Korean. And now, I don't want to get my facts wrong. I have this written somewhere. The millions, millions, basically. Yeah. Five, uh, $500 million they are pouring into just South Korean. Yeah. Wow. Well, they're, they're phenomenal yeah, actors. Yeah. They've got a really interesting edge on them. Yeah, fan fantastic. So you've given us some good, uh, some good recommendations. Uh, yes, anything I'm else for us today, or is that it? Um, I was just going to tell you that Jodie Foster speaks better French than me. There you go. <laughs> in case you were wondering, folks, in case you were wondering, sitting there in Aberdeen or in Denmark or in Houston or whatever, I wonder who speaks the best French, Subro or Jodie Foster. You have the answer. Thank you, Subro. See Thank you later you. on. Hey, the she got, she got her into it. Um, That's been that's been bothering me for a while, wondering who speaks the best French. I was awake at two AM this morning. I was who sorry. speaks the best French? Who speaks the best French? Um, <clears throat> let's give away some more uh, hard earned profits. This time it is uh, OGV Podium, where we're giving away um, tickets to go and see a band of your choice at the podium. So while I'm chatting, you can type in capital O, capital G, capital V. See the way I'm tracking it along there. You like that? Uh, yes. Podium. And we need the song, and we need the artist, and of course these are all movie related, so that should give you a bit of a a bit mm -hmm. of a link there. Um, right, I think this uh, this director's been mentioned a few times. So OGV podium, song and artist, and you can win yourself some tickets. Vanessa, which uh, correct answer will we take? Let's mix it up. Oh my word! Now you put me on the spot. Okay, I'm going to go wild and crazy, and we're going to go fourth. The fourth, the fourth correct answer. The fourth. <laughs> Enter multiple times, right? OGV Taproom, artist song. Don't 
torture you, torture you. That's uh, that's a good idea. Let's go get a taco. Oh, we've got a few in. Jay Smith was in first, he's right. Andrew Connolly, you can't win, you're the sponsor today. You're barred. Um, uh, Barry Young was second. Um, we have Richard Scott as third, so the next correct answer wins it. And they were all right, so copy them. You don't even need the film for this one. I think the winner is, let me see. So Richard, so we said the next correct answer. It's uh, it's Andy, was just in before Alexander. OGV podium, stuck in the middle with you, Steeler's Wheel. There you go. Do you know who is singing on this? Do you know who Steeler's Wheel's frontman was, Vanessa? No, I don't. Jerry Rafferty, Baker Street. That voice you hear is Jerry Rafferty. Oh my word. Yeah, listen, kind of makes sense, right? Well done, Andy. You're off to see uh, an artist. Um, um, could be uh, when the Yum Yum Breakfast Burrito Band come and play. I know he loves that. Or I hear Simply Red are coming, so you can maybe head along and see your favourite band. Um, see well done to you. What a choice. What a choice, What a, what a choice. What a choice. Um, we're not going to mess around. We're going to go straight into one of the features that's been with us for the longest on this show, and it's got one of the nicest theme tunes. Me. I was listening to this the other day and I realised that we only listened to the first few seconds on this show, but it gets better and better, this song. It's an amazing song. What do you um, I don't need to talk. Just, you don't need to just play that, absolutely. I'm going to put up um, Smashing Wine at 8am in the morning with the social sommelier that is Vanessa Gartell, who brings us wine, wine beautifulness, if that's a word. Um, oh, what do you have for us today? Thank you. Well... You tell me, it's another, it's another international day. <laughs> So, on Saturday is an international wine, uh, wine day. Saturday as well, because Eric and I, you know, the burrito, we are trailblazers and we set yes. the trend. Saturday night on Strictly Come Dancing is actually their movies theme. And we're just ahead of the curve. So when we're watching a little bit of movies or Strictly, we always like to, ha like to have a nice little glass of splotch. Well, I do. So, um, Saturday is International Pinotage Day. Okay, then. I know it tickles you, but it's true. So we are going to do a pinotage this week. Um, pinotage is a really complex grape, but it's got the most fabulous history. So for once, I'm going to be vaguely educational, just for like, wow. I know, I know, breaking news for like 45 seconds. So pinotage, South Africa's signature red grape, right? You've probably mm -hmm. all heard of it, but you may not know the history behind it. So 1925, there was this really, really smart professor in South Africa, and he wanted to make a new um, grape variety. So he crossed Pinot Noir with um, another uh, red grape called Sinsau. And Sinsau in South Africa at the time was known as, uh, known as Hermitage. So wow. he took Pinot Noir and, Herm and, and Hermitage and crossed it, hence Pinotage, right? right? And at the time, he was also thinking, um, should I call it Herminoir, as in Hermitage? and Sal and Pinot Noir, but he stuck with Pinotage. So he, he crossed this, all super exciting. Anyway, the professor went and planted all these seeds in a garden, right? Then he went and got a new job and forgot about it, forgot about all these seeds, and this garden became like massively, massively overgrown. And then just as the gardeners were about to come in with all their shovels and dig everything up, someone spotted all these little vines and they saved Pinotage. So, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? So Very good. You're very good. Thank you. So we almost didn't have um, Pinotage, and that's the history behind um, Pinotage. As I said, it is, of course, um, South Africa's red um, signature grape. It's really, really tricky <laughs> to make well, super, super tricky. And it did actually get quite a bad reputation for, like, really not very nice quality wine. 
Uh, there's some really good winemakers who've been around for about the past 15 years. Lots of um, very careful um, winemaking techniques. And it's really, really showing just like this beauty. So the South Africans I, are in. The South Africans are in the host. Tim, our new Tim would be like, boom. As soon as I chose this, yeah. I was like, Tim's going to be thrilled. So we are doing this. Our, it, it is part of the Morrison's best range. Right. It's Pinotage 2021 from South Africa. And as you can see on the label, it's got the whole sort of like animals and safari kind Love of Love that. Thing. Beautiful. So the reason that I chose this particular one was um, in the Decanter 2015 World Wine Awards. This was the only red wine out of 49 wines that won a gold medal. What? Was, yep. And it was also commended at the International Wine Challenge 2021. So let's take a look. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous pinotage. It's really, yeah, beautiful, vibrant colour. I'm sorry that the stream cam never does it um, justice, but one of these days we'll all do it in, in person. Really, really, really deep berries. Pin pinotage is all about, like, I think, forest fruits. Um, it's got really, really characteristic black fruit. So on the nose, <laughs> Pinot Noir, Bill Boy. Pinot Noir. On the nose, all about really, really juicy, um, ripe blackberry, think beautiful black cherry. There's a really, really nice little hint of spice that's coming through as well. And then on the um, palette for, for Movies Week, here we go. Smooth. Ooh. Smooth. So, Smooth. This, this is really, really, really juicy. This is absolutely a belter. Lots of um, nice plum flavours. Um, it's quite, Pinotage is a heavy, heavy wine, but this has actually got really, really lovely tannings. And there's a really, really nice little chocolatey finish, which, I mean, who doesn't want a chocolatey finish on their wine? It's absolutely outstanding. So perfect with roasted meat. So really, really nice for the time of year. Sausages as well. Um, this is an amazing value. It is award winning. It's a stunning, stunning example of Pinotage done well. And that from Morrison's is seven pounds. <laughs> The crowd are loving it. The crowd are absolutely loving there it. Outstanding go. today. Outstanding Thanks. today. Um, t tremendous. And um, Jay's asking, can you remember? Can you re recommend a good wine for a head cold, please? <laughs> Pinotage. Pinotage. Absolutely. Um, outstanding today. We loved uh, uh, Thursday Thursday. Thank you, Thanks. Vanessa. Now is the point of the show where we hand it over to you. There's a clue above my shoulder what's about to happen and I need to be careful so I'm going to supplement some of Simon's lyrics here because he gets a bit uh he gets a bit excited so I'm going to supplement them but you'll you'll know what I mean it's over to you guys you know what to do I picked it up slow but now it's just a ritual I didn't want the captain's role but I'll steer us over highs and lows it's coming It's a funny carnival. <laughs> I'm just a furry animal. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah, that's actually a feature on this show. That's actually a, that's actually a feature. It's called um, Mon the Biff, where people just type in Mon the Biff when we play Biffy Clyro. That's the level we're at. That's the, and you can't really unpick that, can you? No, like, exactly. It, you can't. It is what it is. We should just leave it as it is. Um, <laughs> on to, you know, we've got a lovely little group page and anyone can join it. Burritonians. I'll put up the, in fact, I can put it up now. Yeah. You can join the Burritonians and the more, the more in there, the better. It's spelt with an E because we set it up like that. Um, <clears throat> um, but we uh, we like to show there's lots of stuff goes on in there. We send out lots of these mugs, and the mugs end up on holiday and stuff. So this is what we call mug shots. 
um, starting off today, Jim Wolfe put in a post in there saying how much he thinks he looks like Andrew Slessor and might be him. Um, uh, John Bloomfield was in Hamburg and took his mug. John Bloomfield is the, 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 the general. Uh, Jenny took hers out into the forest. Um, Graham Dallas put a joke in about burritos, a little uh, penguin telling burrito jokes, burritos. Andrew Slesser went to see the skids at OGV Podium with the tickets he won on this show. Mark Cowison made us some voiceovers. Ah, forgot to play them. I'll play one of them. Uh, Matt Pybus was having feature part of Shrafton Coffin Day at his house. Paul Burgess was uh, at his, where he works um, with a little toad there. Uh, Tina Yarvit Pereira did a little Lifting Our Spirits cartoon because we had a lift. Mark Cowison's eating burritos in Dubai. Matt Pybus is trying to annoy you by putting some cheap wine up on uh, on there. Ross, I'm going to pause that because we need to say we need to say happy birthday because Ross was celebrating his uh, daughter's birthday. Um, Emily, Ross Jolly's daughter, is celebrating her birthday. But not only that's a very expensive week. We need some sympathy here for Ross. Wife's birthday, two daughters' birthday, all in October. An that's, expensive, an expensive old month. So if you're watching, and I think they are, hi Emily, um, oh. and happy birthday to you. Um, let's uh, let's see what else is coming up. John Bloomfield uh, managed to get the one of the mugs in a submarine. And Andrew Slesser, join this group if you're in this group already and you haven't. This is one of the most touching pieces of content I've ever seen in my life. Written by Andrew, whose new job means that he's going to struggle to get here. He's been with us from the start. And he wrote this beautiful tribute and opened up. And, uh, I, yeah, I, really I struggled amazing. to talk about that one because it was fantastic, right? Fantastic. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's your mug shots. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh, bless Ross. We could just uh, we could just bend the next one, can't we? You are. We could just bend the next one. No, I don't think we. I don't think we should because you've put a lot of work into this, Eric. So it is. Um, Stressful. Do you, you? I'm probably putting you on the spot. I didn't know if you had your little um, your little jingle for it. But anyway, if you don't, I do. I do. I do actually. I do. I've got. A, I've got a jingle for this. Who is he? Who? Who? Mark Cowson. Who, who? Is it Ken Dodd? Is it Stacy Dooley? Let's find out. It's Doyle's Doubles. Right, so go on, go on. Go I mean, on. what an absolutely amazing intro. So every week um, I challenge um, Eric to do an impression of someone well-known, normally aligned with the theme of the show. Um, it amuses um, all of us immensely. And we ask you wonderful baritones to basically pot him out of his misery by putting in the comments who you think he is trying to impersonate. So all yours, lovely Eric. Doyle's Doubles. <coughs> Yeah, and these are meant to be dreadful, right? But as soon as as soon as someone says who it is, then I can stop doing it, right? So here we go. I came here, I came here for a proper fight, a shootout with men. What's that? A rolling pin? What are you going to do? Bake me a cake? Sing me a song? I came here for a proper shootout, like Geronimo, General Custer, like a Western. Come on, Francis, let's go. Get out of my way. Never mind him, Francis. Is that a sherbet lemon? Can I have a go on that? Do not give him. A sherbet lemon, Francis. Hold on, I've actually got a little tune that I can play. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am a terrible person. No, it's not zippy. I'm a terrible person, Francis. Not like you're a lovely girl. You're a lovely girl. I am ill. I'm not very well, Francis, at all. But I came here for a proper fight, a shootout. A shooter. Someone said, not Ben. Oh, yeah. What are you looking The legend. That's that's good enough for me. I can stop now. Someone yeah. got the film. Legend. Yeah. Yes. So that is... Uh, <laughs> well, Cray, well, do. That's it. Cray, someone well, got it. Someone got it. I can't be here for a proper shootout. <clears throat> was that any that was dreadful right no it was really good and it was very difficult for you to edit it because actually in that film he is slightly more explicit in a little bit yes desire for a shootout so you um you did bob carroll cheese yeah yes is it bob carroll cheese um it, yeah <laughs> it's 
Not that far off, Stephen. It's not that far off. Right, we we are pretty much bang on time, and we managed to get with all this malarkey that's happened today. Alan Partridge, um, North <laughs> Norfolk Digital. Um, yeah, I've only got actually got one impression for everyone. I've got a high one for Brian Cox, and I've got a low one for everybody else. Um, in fact, that was Roger Moore. Um, we're into the uh, the end of the show, and we've got our grand prize draw. So anyone who's managed to stick with us can win. Uh, let me just put it up. Let me just put it up here. You can win. Uh, 150 pounds of Amazon vouchers. Um, our sponsor this week for that prize is the amazing Team Amenco, and they are gonna they are gonna be our. our yep. I just Every wanna... week, and I know, I know, I know. I just, I, I just want to just check, Eric, that that is the Amenco who provides smart solutions, yep. who recognise ocean industry needs through global representation. Mm -hmm. I'm Understand how client requirements can meet technology solutions, who bring yep. together different parts of the Amenco toolbox of technologies, who work with their clients to deliver fit for purpose solutions and support their clients through the lifetime of the product, thrilling their clients in the process. That's the Amenco who are very generously sponsoring us this week. Is that I, correct? I, I, I still don't know how you do this. You do it every week. You're so you're, you're so knowledgeable about all organizations. Just off the top of your head, that is the Amenco. Andrew Connolly, you know, our sponsor. Fantastic. So um, what we need is Emenco in capitals, I-M-E-N-C-O. Write that in. And this one's hard. You're not barred, Jay. You're not barred. It's a, we're wiping the slate clean. Yep. Lesser's gone in a few weeks. <laughs> so now, get in quick, get in quick. Um, we'd love to see someone new, but we don't mind that we need the, now remember it's about films, right? The yeah. Menko, the song, the artist, and the film. We need all four pieces together to make this work. And uh, what one are we going to take? I think we're going to say third because there's a lot of typing on this one and mine yeah, is time for people. So we will say the third, but it, be prepared for a bit of... Jiggly pokery, right? Here we go. Menko, song, artist, film. We're a moment spent. Oh, need the name of the song, Richard. Nearly, Richard. Imagine the shazamming that's going on right now. What did you say it was? What number? Third. The third, right. So the first correct answer was, uh, was Barry. Joe said Brian Adams got it wrong, so that means the second correct answer was Ross. I don't want to miss a thing. Uh, at aerospace, uh, aerospace, Stephen, yes. not aerospace. Uh, so that means that the third correct answer was, I think it's Jessica. I've lost track of everything, but it's yeah, it's it's right. The first correct answer was Barry. Right. Joe got uh, Joe. Joe didn't get it right. Uh, Aerosmith, I don't want to... Second was Beth. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm incorrect. The second was Beth, which means the third was Ross Jolly. Emenko, I don't want to miss a thing. Aerosmith, Armageddon is spot on. Jessica, I'm so sorry, I'll make it... But she did win. She won last week. She won last week. But congratulations, Ross, because that's all your birthday presents paid for. Oh, the birthday's done, mate. Oh, the birthday's done. Fantastic. Yeah, amazing. So uh, well done to you. We're going to hook you up with the lovely Andrew Connolly at Amenco. What a fantastic sponsor they've been. We're back. We've already booked our sponsor. It's amazing when companies get in touch and say, we'd love to sponsor. So we've booked our sponsor for the next two weeks. Um, but I just want to say thank you to Andrew and Team Amenco for sponsoring us. That is our show this week. This has been your big live breakfast burrito. Let's go to the movies one. We hope you enjoyed it. I've had a ball. Vanessa, have you enjoyed it? Do you know what? I've had an absolute blast this morning. Loved Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, really it's been great. Um, thanks to OGV Taproom, OGV Podium. Thanks to Omenko. Thanks to Wendy, Stephen and Sarah for coming on Breakfast Cam. 
Thanks to Will, Susan and Simon for their excellent work that they do. Well done to the winners and well done to you for turning up. If you liked it, tell your friends, come back next week. This just goes on forever. We are relentless, right? Um, and uh, Graham Alexander, what was that? Forever, did you say? Forever. This goes that on forever. Forever. Contract, my friends. <laughs> Um, I'm going to I'm going to play a couple here, right? So I'm going to start with this one. This is uh, we're just going to play out. This is the embarrassing bit where we just we just stay on and wave. Graham Alexander from Perry and Smith recommended this. Very good. Very good. We hope you enjoyed it, guys. Have a splendid week. There he is, Dave's back. Busy <laughs> that Dave, isn't he? An entire song again? Oh, oh, God's God. sake. Come on, Jim, get started. This is the end. Dum, dum, dum. Let's get some people on to do the, uh, the embarrassing wavy wavy. Lovely Thank you so much, everyone. I thought we might do a bit of this as well, because it's just... Ooh, what's that? Gladiator. Husband of a murdered uh, wife, father of a murdered son, and I will have my revenge in this life or the next, mate. <laughs> Husband of a murdered wife, and I will have more revenge in this life or the next. I always cry at the end of this movie. Every time, every time he goes off to meet his wife, just, just stop, it's stop watching it before the end. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so did we, Matt. Uh, so did we, Mark. We miss Matt too, but he's uh, he's yeah. decided he's too Sad. busy. Sad. How cheerful has it been without a rant, though, eh? I oh, know. It's, it's like it's, it's, we're all we're all free. <laughs> we're all free. Have a great week, everyone. Have a great run into the weekend. Bye See bye. you later. Happy Thursday. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye.